You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. Get an isolation with the with the linebacker. You tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. I'm joined alongside Jacob live in Wisconsin. We got Tim live in Green Bay. We got Emilio down here in Tennessee ready to talk a little Green Bay Packers as day two of free agency pretty much wraps up. A little bit of Packers news to cover for sure. I'm trying not to laugh because every time it never fails, 30 seconds before we go live, these knuckleheads say something and get me cracked up. And then I got to read an intro. So <laughs> but, um, good to have you guys in here tonight. How's everybody doing? Jacob, I know you were uh, you getting in the spring cleaning mode a little bit, ain't you, man? Sun out today. Wisconsin, I don't know where you were, Timmy, but uh, it was like 61 and sunny all day. I had the doors and windows wide open, did a ton of cleaning, cleaned out the garage. Oh, it was a good day. Yeah, you like that uh, 25 minutes of spring we had, huh? It's going to be <laughs> it's back, really back, be really 30 weird. this weekend. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful up here. Um, I just talked to a buddy in Milwaukee. It's even even warmer down there. But, uh, yeah, loving the weather up here for sure. Yeah, and Emilio down here, he sent us a fake video he ripped off the web <laughs> pretending like he was working. We know that wasn't actually your dump truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was 70 and sunny, and I moved about half the half the rock. All right. It's, it's funny because he, we always say he's lying about working, but you could tell he's definitely in the best shape amongst all of us, right? Like, <laughs> That's true. He's out there. Uh, to I be was, uh, oh, Jacob goes to the gym, remember? That's right. I work <laughs> out. J-I-M. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I was I was out there uh, smoking some chicken today, man. A little barbecue chicken. Put it on about two fifty for about three hours. Got that internal temp just right. It fell apart. It was good, man. It was good. And that's right. why Emilio looks the way he looks. Tim's in tip top shape, <laughs> and uh, I'm over here with three chins. That's just the way it goes. So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll straighten that out though. Um, good to see everybody in the chat. I know there's a lot of conversating going on in here. We got Eric Sutherland. Jacob came in here poking the bear a little bit there. We got uh, Andres. Too old for this. William Gould, just a quick shout out to everybody. Mark in the chat. Mm -hmm. Ed Fish in here. Good, good evening, sir. David Mitchell, what's up, buddy? Peter Stone, Doug Pointer, Ron Sandwell, um, Greg, Larry, Mr. Larry in the house. United Bates, Jason Wyman. There's a lot of people in here. Goodness gracious. Um, let's see here what we got. Bryce B in the chat says, working midnights and eating some gumbo, watching the best Packer show there is. Much love, everyone. Go, Pack, go. Thank you, Bryce. Appreciate it, man. Let us know what that channel is. Let us know what that show is. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what gumbo it is, honestly. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah, that's the important thing. Can we get some gumbo? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with some gumbo, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so let's do this. Let's just kind of – can we get the hard part out of the way, guys? Is that good with you? Let's just uh, – let's kind of put – just put a stamp on the whole Aaron Jones thing. I've seen a little bit in the chat. It's all over Twitter. Everybody arguing over it. I don't want this offseason to be like it's been the last two years where everyone's bickering back and forth over, you know, a move. What's funny is Aaron Jones and Brian Gutekunst are probably just fine. And we got fans that hate each other because, <laughs> because they parted ways. So it, it is a business. It is what it is. Some people would say you could handle it a little bit different. Others would say, hey, it's a bit strictly a business. Get over it. I understand both sides. But uh, this right here, just to kind of put 
put a, a, a cap on it, right? Matt Schneiden tweeted this out. He's been obviously uh, combing through, doing a little digging. He tweeted out, Aaron Jones' contract details per source. The original Green Bay deal was $11 million base salary, $1 million incentives. Final Green Bay offer was a little less than $4 million base, $2 million incentives. So essentially he went from $12 million to $6 million, right? Now, of course, the deal that he got from the Vikings was $6 million base, $1 million incentives. So overall, a $7 million contract is what he could potentially have there. So $1 million more than the Packers offered. Uh, he said Jones wanted to retire in Green Bay but didn't want to take another hometown discount of that magnitude. So, um, again, I think what it says on the surface for me is it's really, really simple. Um, Goody valued – Josh Jacobs more than he valued Aaron Jones, right? That's what it comes down to. And time will tell if it was the right decision. If Josh Jacobs returns to that 2022 form, we're getting the best back in the league, right? Um, if he plays more along the lines that he did last year, then obviously you're getting uh, you're getting a guy that's a little, you know, some would say not even above average as far as last year's um, numbers. So um, I'm going to choose to think positive, positive, and uh, say we're going to get that 2022 guy, right? Couple him with Emmanuel Wilson. Uh, you got Jordan Love. You're going to be probably given a contract extension. I don't know if you guys seen Matt Schneiden on the back of his show earlier today, but uh, he was on there talking about how, I mean, he sounded really, really confident that Jordan Love was going to get a contract extension here as soon as we get past May 3rd at some point. You know, you got to have that 12 month, uh, you know, 12 month in between the contract signing of the, the old restructure. So, um, on the surface, so anybody got anything else you want to add to the Aaron Jones thing? We'll just go around the horn with it one last time here, Jacob, uh, as far as what Matt Schneiden tweeted out there, man. Uh, I got to start. All right. Well, it's <laughs> – I, I don't know. It, it it still ruffles some feathers of mine because it's such a small amount to keep a guy. Um, but if I am looking at it through – if I put my goot hat on and I block my – you know, block all the haters off and just make a decision for what's going to be best for this team in the next two to three years. I think you have to make the decision he made. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different things. I, 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 it, it's, it feels like I'm doing something wrong saying that I'm, I'm okay with it now, but no, man, no. It, it's just that I understand it and I'm ready to move on. And to be honest, the reason I'm ready to move on is because so many little s- just me, 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 me. In the comments and every single place you go, it's like, dude, you guys are just insufferable. Just miserable, man. Miserable. Insufferable. Yeah. No doubt about it. It is it's it's miserable, man. Like the one I seen today that really got me was in the YouTube comments. And you know, the channel's growing like crazy. And I, I think everybody who's listening, watching all that good stuff, whether you're watching live or watching later. But the problem with the YouTube channel growing too is you get these guys that come in that are just absolutely toxic, right? They're just they're the only time you hear from when they want to disagree, they're they're in to get a reaction, and it's why we shouldn't even talk about it, right? We should just remove the comment and move on. But the one I heard today that really bothered me, Jacob, and it's, it's the first thing that popped to mind when you said, you know, seeing everybody going at it in the comments was, you know, Aaron Jones fumbling in the big-time games is the reason we haven't won a championship yet. And I'm going, hold up. Now, 24 hours ago, this dude was the hero of Green Bay. And then the second he gets cut, now all of a sudden everything's his his fault. Kind of like Rodgers before. Kind of like, you know, just insert Brett, same way with Brett, you know. And that's the funny thing, too, and I'll, I'll, I'll pass it along to Tim here. But if we can welcome Brett back after he literally tried to burn the organization to the ground, that is that is a fact. Like, Brett – Brett was trying to get everybody – like, he was trying to go above everyone's head, like, you know, type of thing. I think I think the Aaron Jones thing is going to be just fine. It is it is what it is. It's business, right? Goody didn't see the value. It's it's really that simple. And those that are saying, look at the injuries, hey, you make a great point. You know, last year he was banged up three different types of injuries too. But nonetheless, I'm going to miss him, man, because, again, you can't in one breath say, oh, this dude's the heart and soul. You know, I'm talking about specific fans. And then the second he's gone, man, this guy's trash anyway. You know, I'm moving on. You know, it's the – just it's just a it's embarrassing as a fan, and that's why we probably shouldn't even add live to it. But anyway, go ahead, Tim. What you got, Bob? Uh, yeah, I don't like hypocrites either. Uh, I'm with you, Clayton. <laughs> Tim, Tim sure. went straight to the point. Yeah, <laughs> straight to the point. I'll, you want you want me to go straight to the point again? Uh, I'll do it again tw- twice in a row here. Uh, Minnesota does not deserve Aaron Jones. Uh, he's that's too right. good of a dude for that crap dumpster fire <laughs> scumbag organization. So I can smell it from here. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, but I, I'm happy that, um, you know, 
<laughs> I'm happy that, um, you know, f- from a football side, like you said, Clayton, we, you know, take the name and, and, you know, just look at the production, look at our football team, uh, think about this season and next season and, and ahead. Don't look back and, right. you know, backwards. So, yeah, from a football perspective, it, it does. It makes sense. Emotionally, of course, I don't want him gone. Of course, I think we should have just paid him and let him play here in Green Bay. Um, but that's why we pay Goody the big bucks to not be emotional and to just make the decisions that need to be made. And yeah. I'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, I can't stress enough. Uh, the Vikings Queens do not deserve Aaron Jones at all. Yeah, I agree, man. It's uh, it, and it's the reason they keep chasing their tail. And what what sucks too is looking at it from Aaron Jones's standpoint. Like their quarterback most likely is going to be Sam Darnold, right? They're trying <laughs> to get this contract ironed out with Justin Jefferson. No one's no one can confidently say Justin Jefferson isn't going to look up and go, you know what? I'm not wasting my prime here, you know. So there's it just it seems like Aaron Jones is going there for one maybe two years, and then it's just going to be I've uh, you know one year. All my Viking fans, I'm literally right on the border. I could throw a football across the river and over the mountain, but that's no here, there, there. Um, <laughs> they are making actual requests, and they're sending out text messages to me saying, we would love if Justin Fields got traded here. And I'm just thinking, really? I, I just can't imagine wanting Justin Fields right. on the team. <laughs> At the same time, I'm thinking, yeah, we're going to have a good shot this year. Like, it's that bad. <laughs> it's that bad, man. I don't and know. They- they kind of showed the stats, and, and I feel like Justin Fields got a little bit better this year, but when you look at the overall, like, scoring and everything, not to turn this into a Justin Fields podcast, it's it's it, all signs are pointing to he's not going to be a good quarterback. Now, can he turn it around? Kurt Warner did, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that dude was stocking grocery store shelves, but Kurt Warner ended up being one of the greatest of all time, and we just don't see that with Justin Fields. So, um, yeah, 2 for this in the chat said, Jones will retire a Packer at the end of the day. He will be – in the Packers Hall of Fame. Uh, very well said, 2 for this. Emilio, what do you got, buddy? I know you're Mr. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one, for, one for my man, Aaron Jones, man, 915. But I like how too old for this said it. And, um, you know, Chris said it. Oh, look at that. Emilio! <laughs> he, went to the, he went to the bar. He'll be back. My man got throttled. Look at this. <laughs> I borrowed him my iguana. I'm just glad it dinged. I was thinking, man, he's sitting over there just pouring his heart out. (laughs) I don't know what happened there. Anyway, I'm going to love Aaron Jones forever, right? And I can't wait for him to come back. But um, obviously, we just got to look forward at this point. The decision was made. We can't keep, you know, complaining or worrying about it. You know, I love Aaron Jones to the end. But at this point, Josh Jacobs is my number one running back, and we're running with it. You know, let him eat, feed, feed the man. And uh, let's get him over there in California with Jordan Love. Start throwing, throwing a couple out routes, a couple swing routes, and let it. Let's go. Absolutely, Chris in the chat, like you were saying, Jones, uh, when he is ready to retire, will retire as a Packer. Day one contract, absolutely, man. No yep. doubt about it. No yep. doubt about it. Um, let's see here. Another one we can kind of kick off with. Peter Stone says, uh, "Quick question: What do we got left in cap space? Um, it depends on who you ask, Peter. Okay, yeah. um, so." I think a good safe number around about somewhere between 16, 17 million is what we've got in cap space right now. Now, keep in mind, there's some things they can still do with the cap to free up more room. Um, I think they're second in the league in dead cap right now. I know people like to pretend that Aaron Rodgers was the only reason that the cap was in quote unquote bad condition, but this shows you the moves they've made the last you know few years. They were trying to, I think they're playing the cash over cap game, and and guys, I think they're playing it pretty darn well, right? Um, we we've we've showed you exactly how much cap you could free up. We said you could free up as much as a maximum was eighty five million this off season if you really wanted to, right? Now there's no way they're going to get anywhere near that number. We came up with a more realistic number of fifty, and then cut that in half to play really conservative and into a quarter and say, okay, just call it twenty five million. You could free up of that money. The only thing they have freed up is roughly, I think it was something like 8 or $9 million they freed up between Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary, right? So with that being said, um, you still got at least another 15 you could free up if you needed it. I just don't know if Goody thinks he needs it, right? And we got a couple signings to talk about here, but to answer your question, Peter, I think it's somewhere around um, – probably somewhere around $16, 17000000 million as it sits right now. What are you laughing at, Emilio? What is what is your problem? I'm laughing at, I'm laughing at one of your co-hosts, all right? He's over here stirring the pot. Somebody in the chat. See, I'm just listening to Clayton. 
Hold your yeah, the hell you are. I can see that look in your face, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, sideline oh, report. I don't care about Jonathan Owens. I'm just sad we're losing Simone Biles. Right? <laughs> so there you go. That's the perfect segue. Appreciate that, bud. Let's just jump right into it here. As obviously Jonathan Owens, we got the news. He signs with the big bad Chicago Bears, right? Um, so uh Mike Garofolo tweeted out the Bears have agreed to terms with defensive back Jonathan Owens on a two-year deal, according to his agent at Sonny the Agent. Well, that's who I want representing me right there. That doesn't that guy sound like he's strictly business at Sonny the Agent. Uh Owens had 84 tackles in his one season with the Packers after spending the first four years of his career with the Texans. So <laughs> you guys know I was talking last night, like he is more of that more of that spur safety, more of that in-the-box safety type guy. Um, decent tackler. It's definitely his strength, I'll say that. Um, PFF grade last year was just in the absolute dumps, right? I was saying I'd like to have him back for a minimum. So it sounds to me like the Bears offered more money than the Packers. And if it was going to be something we're going to get into a bidding war with Jonathan Owens, I wouldn't be interested, right? So I understand why Goody let him walk. I know Simone Biles did put a really cool tweet out thinking the Packer fans, thinking the people of Green Bay and how they welcomed them and treated them and everything. So that was really cool. And we look forward to kicking kicking his rear end twice of twice a year now, right? That's uh, that's how those bears still suck. <laughs> <laughs> what comes into play there obviously is uh the safety room, right? You you get Xavier McKinney, which if we've got time, I've actually got a chalk talk queued up for Xavier McKinney, three plays that I think are pretty cool. Um if we don't have time then we'll we'll carry it over to another day. When you look at the safety spot right now, guys, you've got Xavier McKinney, who's going to play more of that free safety. He he typically lines up from the offense's perspective. He lines up on the left side. In the modern-day NFL, safeties coming into the league typically now can play both spots, right? And you'll see on the chalk talk how he slides into the box on two different plays, and one of which he kind of sugars and fades out in what I think is a cover two man. He's the, uh, the second-half zone, and he makes a heck of a play on the ball. But – when you look at the safety position right now, you got you got basically Xavier McKinney, you got Anthony Johnson Jr., right, and you got you know, one or two other guys that are pretty much practice squad material. So, I think they could still make another splash in free agency, possibly if you get the right deal come along. If not, then you're going to be building through the draft. But nonetheless, Jonathan Owens will not be a part of the Packers moving forward. Thank him for his services. Move on. Obviously, he's going to the Chicago Bears. Emilio, you okay, Bob? You doing all right? I'm good. All right. You <laughs> seem like you're holding on really, really. Really good. I, I, th- I appreciate that, Tim. I'm going to hold off on that tonight, buddy. Thank you so okay. much. For no worries. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, we're just supposed to do 10. So people in the pot are going, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. We're just, you know, <laughs> professionally having a conversation. Hold up, oh. hold up over the cap. They said that uh, the team cap space currently, I don't know if it's updated, $33 million, roughly. That's what I said. <clears throat> But that's but, does that have Xavier McKinney's contract on it though? Because those numbers haven't been released yet. Correct, so. it does not. So until we get Xavier McKinney's contract numbers, we don't truly know. But you guys remember they're saying somewhere around 16, 16 and a half million per on average. So you deduct that out. That's why I was saying I would think it's pr- it might be a little backloaded, kind of like how we did Josh Jacobs. Um, but uh, again. Probably somewhere between, like I said, somewhere between 15 and 17 million is probably the space you've got right now. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Thank you for looking that up, though, Emilio. Obviously, that was hilarious on their side. That's why you were giggling over there. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in other news today, I think I put it on the ticker and I was supposed to grab a screen grab and I forgot to. And you guys uh, keep marking those chats for me, okay? If there's anything you guys want to want to want me to read uh, or cover as far as a topic but we just uh, leave the lululemon alone or is that we're going to put those up there (laughs) somebody get a lululemon comment mark oh Oh, jacob Jacob started it yeah what are you doing over here jacob I've just been listening to you and make getting ready to that is the (laughs) listening to you and making fun of Emilio <laughs> All right. So obviously yesterday, the big the big news, you sign Xavier McKinney, you sign Josh Jacobs, you release Aaron Jones, release David Bakhtiari. Darnell Savage ended up with the Jaguars. John Runyon went to the Giants, right? Um, and that was uh, Lily Zhao that that tweeted that out, obviously. So we got that done. Today you end up uh re-signing uh, Keyshawn Nixon. I thought I had the screen grab somewhere, but I guess I do not. I thought I added it. Um, essentially what he got, and this one kind of caught us off guard a little bit, didn't it, guys? They're saying three years, 18 million, right? 
Now, you've seen some places had his market value based off of his performance in the nickel spot at like $2 million per. Others had it around $4 million per. And I was thinking the $4 million per, more realistic because of the returnability, right? Um, I don't think anybody's going to try to convince you that that he's just this top-notch slot corner. Um, but coming into the tune of roughly six, six and a half million per on average, um, I don't like it on the surface. I really don't. But uh, it's funny because we're over here all pissed off that Aaron Jones is gone, right? And then we're we're also a little upset that we re-signed Keyshawn for six million per. Yes. But many many people look at that and go, if you went to Packer fans and said, "Hey guys, we got to make a decision here: Keyshawn Nixon or Aaron Jones," I think we know what everybody would have said, right? So yeah, that's the tough part. Um, but with that being said, you set the floor with your nickel spot. You got the best kick returner in the game back. I think it is positive news, and we got to look at the the details of the contract, Tim. If it's a three year deal, what is it? Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Two years. There you go. It'll probably be a little backloaded, and I'm sure that by the third year, it'll be minimum, if anything, cap penalty if you want to move on, right? So you're essentially signing the kick returner of the year to a two-year deal is what it really is. Go ahead, Jacob. Um, did you by chance hear Ryan's latest podcast where he talked about how he thought that was a crazy big number, but then he thought about possibility how the kicking game may actually become more relevant again, because there's another rule change that's coming about. And if that rule change is implemented, all of a sudden we, we got to ace up our sleeve. That's what we talked about the other day, right? McAfee went, went into it, uh, very, very in depth on how the league is trying to prevent, trying to create explosive plays on the kickoff, right? And and I think, you know, first of all, me being the, the traditionalist I am, I hate any kind of rule changes. So I don't want you to take this opinion as Clayton likes the new rule change. What well, Jacob's point now is everyone's opinion, including Pat McAfee, who you all know is one of I mean, he was I think he was voted by PFF as punter of the decade. Right. When he was playing, um, if he says, hey, there's going to be more explosive plays, then I love that. I, I love that Ryan is looking at the positive side of that because it could become an absolute weapon again, right? So, Tim, how do you feel about Keyshawn on the, on the surface there, Buff? Oh, I mean, I love the re-signing for sure. The the specifics, yeah, that's a little shocking, you know, the mm-hmm. amount that we paid. And honestly, I at the end of the day, I don't think it was ever a Aaron Jones or Keyshawn kind of conversation. I think this is just how things ended up happening. Um, so I'm happy that he's uh, – Getting getting his money, um, and I mean that's Goody saying with the checkbook that that's our starting slot corner. And uh, if if we draft someone and someone comes to camp and makes it interesting, then we'll we'll have that conversation down the road. But you know, kick return game or not, you know, set that to the side. Uh, that's that's starter starting slot corner money right there. Um, or at least too much to pay a guy to be two or three on the depth chart. So I think we can uh, just go into this year at least you know, with that in our heads, that Keyshawn is the dude at the slot. Yeah, absolutely. Emilio, you good with it, Bob? Yeah, I think I also think that um, if Keyshawn doesn't have to run as many snaps, that he probably wants to get into punt returns more too, right? So that he even if even if those new kickoff rules don't take or whatever, Ooh. he's trying to get a couple extra, you know, returns per game. Yo, what if they're sneakily going to use him on offense? Because didn't they want to do that? And don't we see like a glimpse of it? What if all of a sudden he's that crazy little – like Dion, guys are playing right both, both sides. I'm waiting for Tim to light up because we've made jokes about it all off season, haven't we, Tim? Like you play yep. Keisha on that. <laughs> yep, and you're you're wow. paying a, you're paying them a lot of money, so you know you don't you don't buy a brand new Lamborghini and not drive it, right? So, right. You're paying them half half halfback money, so 
<laughs> Might as well put them out there. I love it. I absolutely love it. So if we take a look at the roster as it sits today, and to the best of my knowledge, it has been somewhat updated on PFF. Let's start with offense real quick, okay? And I just want to hit these. Well, first of all, I'm sorry. John Schmidt says, I'll take Ford, talking about Rudy Ford, at a minimum over Owens at more. No worries. Completely agree, John. Uh, Rudy is higher on the priority list for me than Jonathan Owens. I think the more time goes by, we're going to see Rudy Ford back in Green Bay. I hope that's the case. The Jonathan Owens one I definitely didn't feel um, really confident about just because I'm just going to say it. His name gets tossed around the league quite a bit because of his wife. And uh, there is, if anybody has learned anything about the 2023-2024 NFL season, having someone famous kind of root for your team, <clears throat> Taylor Swift, does help the numbers, does help business, right? So uh, I think there's a little bit of that factor in there too. I don't listen too much Taylor Swift. Uh... We appreciate that, Jordan. We're glad you don't, buddy. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree about Rudy Ford for sure over Owens. So if we look at the offensive side of the ball here, according to PFF, we're going to focus on 11 personnel, okay? Um, this is how they've got it listed. Let's start with the offensive line from left to right. Rasheed Walker, 66.3. Uh, Elton Jenkins, 63.8. Josh Myers, 54.7. Sean Ryan, 49.3. Zach Tom, 79.7. At the tight end position, they got Luke Musgrave in the starting spot, 68.1. And then at wide receiver, in the Z, they've got uh, Christian Watson at a 68.2. In the X, they have got uh, Romeo Dobbs at a 73.6. And then in the slot, they got Reed at a 73.3. Now, people see that numbers and they think, you know, Watson seems a little low. I agree it is. But uh, there's another guy by the name of Dontavian Wicks and another man by the name of Bo Melton that I think is kind of getting written off here. And we'll talk about them in just a second. Jordan Love, 83.6. You love to see it. Most important position, obviously, on offense. And there you see Josh Jacobs. That's a hard number to stomach when you're used to seeing Aaron Jones in the 80s, right? Uh, Josh Jacobs coming in at a 65.0. The 50th, 50 out of 59 halfbacks that had a season grade there last year. So, uh, obviously, down year, some would blame the offense. Some would blame the coaching, the play calling, the lack of having a quarterback to be able to attack downfield, all those things. So, uh you know, it is what it is. I don't want to make excuses for a guy before he even gets here. I just want to see him come out in week one and just absolutely rip the throats out of opponents, right? That's what I want to see. So um, I'm I'm believing and hoping that that's going to happen. Now, before I get your all's take, and we can bounce back to this image in just a second, what I want to point out about wide receiver, if you go to the wide receiver room, Bo Melton, right, 178 snaps, graded out at 83.4. Dontavian Wicks, 516 snaps graded out of 77.8, okay? So those two receivers, obviously, if you were just going strictly off a of grade, Christian Watson's actually your number five receiver right now. Now, when he's healthy, we've seen him absolutely light it up, right? So I'm not saying this is, this is how we should look at Christian Watson. I'm simply saying you go through training camp and Bo Melton and Dontavian Wicks, more specifically Dontavian Wicks, takes a step up, right, a, a huge leap in, in his second year there. Don't be surprised if he becomes, you know, one of these. I don't want to say wide receiver one because that's really not how this uh, this offense operates. Like back in the RPO days, the RPO heavy days with Dante or with uh, with uh, Devonte Adams. Um, but I think you got to really take into consideration Dontavian Wicks and Bo Melton being a, a big impact players this coming season. So we'll start with you, Jacob. What do you think about this? And I can bounce back and forth to these images. Well, all I'm saying is, doesn't my mock draft now look, not look so silly? Because uh, I replaced three <laughs> offensive linemen right away, get a new center, two guards, all of a sudden, boom, we're stacked and we got backups. So, yeah. And it's, Jacob, it's why we've got to, I'm speaking to myself here, we got to ignore those people like, there's no way you should take an offensive line in the first round. I'm going, bro, look at our run blocking grades. And like, it was pick 27. It wasn't like I was picking third overall. <laughs> You took a center with a third overall pick. I love it. And again, when you do those mock drafts, you know, some people go, oh, I don't like him. That's your opinion. You know, everybody's kind of got their favorites. And that's why I don't put a whole lot of stock in mock drafts. It's more about where do you think you can find value in each pick, right? Now, when you talk about the offensive line, I'm glad you brought that up because when I took a tackle in the first round, Jacob, I got absolutely lit up for it. Rasheed Walker's fine. Guys, we're talking about making the offensive line better, right? Think about this. What if you what if you land a franchise tackle, right? And he just falls right in your lap. How about kicking Tom to right guard and putting that new tackle in at right tackle? 
how about taking a Graham Barton and plugging and playing him at right guard or have him compete for center, right, or whoever it may be. You know, Bordellini, say they fall in love with Bordellini, absolutely ends up being a stud. Because we had the mindset that we're not willing to take an offensive lineman in this draft because we're fine at offensive line, you're going to pass up on that. And it's why we pulled up the uh, the tweet there from Westendorf last night. If Rashid Walker takes a step back in his second year playing, right, second year starting, this offensive line looks a lot worse if, if Walker dips into the 50s. Am I right? Like, I mean, you're looking at an absolute disaster for Jordan Love. So um, I think there's multiple angles you could take with offensive line. I'm simply saying best player available. I don't care who it is. If it's if it somewhat fits a need and he's in that top tier of talent, you pull the trigger on it, man, whether it's a right guard, whether it's a tackle. Now, I don't think they're going to go interior offensive line in the first round. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I personally don't think it's going to happen. But, Jacob, I'm 100% on board with you, dude. Like, the offensive line, Josh Myers is in a contract year too, right? Like, I'm not saying Josh Myers is the worst center in the game. I'm just saying he's not in the top half, in my opinion. And when you when you take into consideration run blocking too, so um, just got to get the team better anyway, anyway, anyhow, right? So Jacob, anything else you want to add to that book? No, realistically, I really only see them <clears throat> in that twenty five spot, going with like that Barton guy or a tackle that fall to him. So, but it like you said, it's fun to mess around and just see the different uh, how the different chips fall. Yeah, definitely. Jake Shavink said, "Take three O line." It's funny you say that, Jake, because in my notes here, as far as needs. I've got us needing a starting right guard and two backup offensive linemen, mm-hmm. one backup interior, one backup tackle. So yep. we're Spot definitely on. on the same page with that. So look at this line. That's one one injury away from oh my god, now Says, what? Yeah, yeah. Because let's say let's say you had one, and then we know we can plug and play guys like Jenkins and Zach Tom. They're pretty versatile on that line. But once you start moving chess pieces around. Before you know it, you're you're shuffling everything around just to put a line together. And we've seen what Green Bay Packer teams with inconsistent offensive lines look like. Um, I don't think we need to relive the memories of 2017 and 18 and some of the crap we had to deal with. So I'm all for it, man. Take take four linemen in this draft. I don't care. Yeah. Absolutely. Jake says Jake says three. Tim says four. The next Tim says five. So I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we'll be all right. Which means they're going to take one. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's saying 50. 50 linemen is actually what he's saying. Absolutely. But honestly, I mean, the, the way the market's going, why would you not take multiple shots at O-line and just run it out for three, four years and then take another shot at O-line, right? It's a lot cheaper to do it like that. And yeah. they can, you know, kind of show up and produce. As long as we're not trying to, you know, uh, reinvent the wheel, I think they're going to be all right at O-line. So, yeah. Jake yeah, they, thank you, Jake. Yeah, Jake says, screw it. Take 11 old lines. <laughs> just, just sold me there. Um, it's like Trucker John said the other day, you know, talking about specific, uh, you know, he was texting with me. Hope you're doing well, Trucker John. Appreciate you listening, buddy. He said, uh, you know, if these positions are really, really expensive, talking about left tackle edge, why not focus on them in the draft and save a ton of money, right? You hit on them, then you got them for a rookie deal. It's exactly what we're talking about here, right? Um, you know, not being willing to use a first-round pick on a, on a premier position, um, it's just – it's mind-boggling to me, right? And, and, again, you know, everybody's got differing opinions. That's totally cool. But I see this offense – when you look at this offense, I don't see the offensive line go, that's a strength. It's the – to me, it's the only weakness, you know, yep. is uh, – it's and, and more specifically run blocking than pass blocking, although pass blocking isn't perfect. But the run blocking aspect's the tough part for sure. Um, let's see here in the chat. Jeff Silkey says, if your name isn't Jenkins or Tom, do you have a job yet? Great point, Jeff. And I'll tell you this, man. Um, when I talked to Mike Wall at the end of the season, if you guys remember on the show, I said, Mike, hit me with a straight. This offensive line, how do you feel about it? How do you, If you were to evaluate these starting five here, how do you feel about this offensive line? His exact words were, 74 and 50 are good. Everyone else is replaceable. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. So he didn't say go replace them. He just simply said you can – he was saying you can upgrade that fairly easy. Right now, when I asked him about Rasheed Walker earlier in the year, he said, I think he's got good feet. And that's that means a lot coming from uh, coming from Mike Wall. I don't know if his opinion changed as the season went on, but I remember early in the season, he really liked what Rasheed Walker had in his footwork for sure. So, um, again, I think Rasheed Walker is going to be a good player. I just think you got to continue to take best player available, not get yourself uh, cornered. And that, that's a beautiful thing. Jake Shavink did a live stream last night. It was just absolutely phenomenal. I believe it was last night. Days are kind of running together. He did a mock draft and he did a phenomenal job, you know, just kind of kind of hitting on that, man. You know, 
and talking about like if if you go into you go into this draft now, if you get Xavier McKinney, you get Josh Jacobs, you can kind of you're free to do what you want in this draft. You don't have to go got to get this position right now, right? You can kind of work the board and, and do what Goody does and maximize the draft, I think. So um, Milltown Corey says, any word on Yash Nyman? I haven't heard a peep. Yash Nyman last year, we put a second round tender on him. We paid him $4 million. He sat on the bench. Um, and Rashid Walker kind of, you know, passed him on the depth chart, if I remember correctly. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how that happened. At least that's how it seemed like it was in my mind. Um, I'd say they're letting him test the market this year and bring him back on a much cheaper contract, right? They definitely overvalued Josh last year. Would you guys agree with that? I think so. I mean, well, right now we still have a two and a half million dead cap on him. So um, it's, yeah, he was, he was really good at rotating, but every time that there was an issue, it it seemed like they always ended up putting Rashid back in. Yeah, definitely. Spin and Wheezy says Rasheed Walker is a starting caliber left tackle. He's not a liability, but if an upgrade is there, you take it. I think that is a very, very well constructed comment there. Spin and Wheezy. Love the name too, by the way. Got the fishing rods up there. Look at this. <laughs> Milio, is this your uncle in here? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but that, that's very well said. He is a starting caliber left tackle. I, I believe that. And when you look at, you know, he's he's grading out 44th amongst 81 tackles, right? But you got two tackles starting. They didn't they didn't separate it into left tackles. So essentially top 64, right, is starting caliber. He's 44th. He's not a bad tackle. It's like you said, though, man, if you can if you can upgrade, it's it's that important for sure. So you can move some stuff around. On The beautiful thing is Zach Tom. I love how they said really good tackle. Pro Bowl guard, all pro center. That's what they said about Zach Tom. So that and and that came from, I believe it was Jason Wildy that said it. And I believe it was someone in the building describing Zach Tom to Wildy, which means it's somebody on the staff, probably. I believe it was Wildy. I apologize if it wasn't. I think that's who it was. So yeah. Yeah, let's see here. Jake Shavink says at spinning wheezy wins, quote, take of the knot. Keeping it reasonable. We love that. It is so rare in today's society. <laughs> so that's the offense. Anybody else want to hit anything else as far as the offense before we move on to defense? Cause that's really the exciting part. Good. All right. So defense, let's focus on nickel. Woo. Look at that free safety up there, boys. Yeah, look at <laughs> yeah and again, it's on paper. There's going to be some people go, I got to see it to believe it. Okay. I, I understand. I completely understand. Um, this to me was hands down the best safety and free agency. Some would argue it was the best player on defensive free agency, especially since Chris Jones came off the board, right, with him re-signing in Kansas City. But essentially what you've got here, for those of you on the pod, the start up front, okay, and it's still listed as a 34 defense. Just take the outside linebackers and, and treat them like, you know, they're still edge defenders, right? They're still still defensive ends. Jeff Halfley at Boston College actually had his edges standing up quite a bit, which would technically be a nickel 245 that he was running to. But Nonetheless, we are switching to a 4-3. That that impacts the linebacker room more than the uh, the inside linebacker room, which now becomes the linebacker room. These guys will become defensive ends. So with that being said, you got Preston Smith, 70.5. Carl Brooks, 69.8. I love that they put him in there over Devontae Wyatt. Um, now we'll see what the coaches think about that. Kenny Clark, 70.4. Rashawn Gary, 79.0. Obviously, Rashawn Gary, your highest-graded defensive player other than your new Xavier McKinney toy, right, um, which is just mind-boggling that people were so upset with Rashawn Gary last year. Um, when you go to inside linebacker or what would be stack backer in this new 4-3 defense, you got Quay Walker, 58.5. Isaiah McDuffie, 57.1. Um Big weak spot right there, guys. There's no denying it, right? Uh, at the cornerback position, Jair Alexander, 75.9. Eric Stokes, 51.5. Keyshawn Nixon in the slot, 60.0, right? So it just kind of shows you he's the 81st graded cornerback. If you were to go to 96, he is technically starting caliber, but obviously you're getting close to that 96 mark because – you know, most defenses obviously are going to play three corners in their nickel D rather than three safeties. So when you move to the safety position, though, Xavier McKinney, 87.8 last year, fourth highest graded safety. I think they said since he came in the league, you guys correct me if, if I read this wrong, since he came in the league, he has the highest coverage grade of all safeties in the NFL. Yes. Which is 
wow. So that was real. I didn't dream that. That is good news. Yeah. That um, would have been a good dream. Yeah, and they've got Anthony Johnson Jr. listed as the strong safety, right, at 47.9, which I don't know who else they could list at that, seeing that we don't have anybody in the room right now. Um, Rudy Ford might be able to compete compete with that if they do sign him back, and maybe they go and added someone in free agency too. So um, real quick before I get your all's take, I wanted to mention, we if you look on the outside, you got Eric Stokes at 51.5. If, if Stokes is healthy, they're going to start him. You guys know how I feel about Stokes. He's become my new Darnell Savage. I just don't. I don't think he's that dude. I hope he proves me wrong. But if you look at Corey Ballantyne, which they brung back today, right, 60.3, significantly higher grade, right, than the 51.5, almost 10 points higher for our boy Corey Ballantyne. He, I think he had the better passer rating when targeted as well. So um, I would like to see Corey Ballantyne get a true shot at that corner opposite Jair Alexander. You've got Carrington Ballantyne, too. He's not on this list. He graded out a 57. So he actually graded out higher than Eric Stokes as well. So I'll start with you this time, Tim. What do you think about the defense, man? What sticks out to you? Where's the needs? How are you feeling about it here day two of free agency? Yeah, I'm with you on Stokes, man. Um, that's uh, something I'm, I'm hoping to see. We've been we've been waiting a couple seasons for that. Obviously, he had the huge injury uh, issues. Um, you know, took a while to get back from that, and then he ended up back on uh, IR, unfortunately. So, you know, it looks like we have depth when it comes to corner, but that the problem is, is it's, it's Ja and everyone else right now. You know, we need, we need starting caliber guys. You know, we, we just talked about Keyshawn getting starter money um, and being put into that slot role. That's his job to lose. Um, I think we need to, to swing hard and often in the draft here uh, to try and get some talent at corner. And then obviously, yeah, in the middle, um, you know, Quay is my boy. I, I love Quay. I love Zay McDuffie. Um, but I think I think we need some some depth there at middle linebacker too, for sure. Um, and then, you know, I, I, Jake had a comment in here that I just saw. I don't know if I started. Is this, is this it right here? Yes, this is great because yeah. th- this pretty much sums it up. I've seen the corner is good. No worries take floating around. And, man, I can't get there with it at all. <laughs> Amen, Jake yeah. Shavink. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's that pretty much sums it up. I mean, people uh, seem, seem to be in love with Harrington Valentine. Uh, maybe it's like always Valentine's Day uh, for these people. And you know, I, I I'm there too. But again, if you can get better, get better. And again, hopefully, we all look stupid for saying this, and these guys go out there and prove us wrong this year. Um, but I think uh, based on the numbers, man, we, we got to add some talent at, in the secondary for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, live to be legendary, says Peyton Wilson, middle linebacker draft, baby. Um, a lot of people big on Peyton Wilson, right? There's an, I think there's an equal amount of people that aren't so big on him, right? I'd be okay with it. I can't remember exactly where he ranks. I had to pull up my board on my board, but I'd be okay if Peyton Wilson was the guy they went with, right? Now, there's been injury concerns, but – Man, that athleticism, absolutely wild being on display. Uh, let's go to Jacob. Jacob, what do you think about the defense, man? Anything stick out to you? Any comments here? Yeah, I mean, obviously the middle of the field needs to be improved, and I think I'd go two cornerbacks, at least two safeties in the draft, and at least two linebackers because, again, we're one. if Alexander goes down with an injury, our cornerback room looks like hot trash. If Walker goes down with an injury, we've got a bunch of guys that are hot trash. So we need to take a bunch of stabs and pepper fire that defense and then few picks for the offensive line, I think we're set. We've got more than enough picks to do it, so I think we'll, we'll see some random stuff here and there, too. Yeah, definitely. Emilio, what do you think, Bob? Yeah, I think Jake's on it. Uh, Jacob's on it there with the <clears throat> two at safety, two at corner, probably two at inside, one edge, and we're just going to keep adding. The uh, The defense needs a little bit of help. Obviously, we got Nixon in there, but I don't think that Goody's going to just send Nixon in there without a little bit of competition at slot. And I think he's going to do the same thing with Quay. Even though they're young, they're going to work them and try to get the best out of them. And if that, you know, whoever we draft ends up being better, so be it, right? Let them play. Yeah, definitely. I agree, man. Completely agree. Um, let's see here in the chat real quick. 2 for this says, we have a safety who can tackle. It's enough to make a grown man cry. <laughs> it really is, man. So Turtle says, he held his own against J.J. earlier. Ballantyne is interesting. I remember that. You guys remember that game where he kind of shut Justin Jefferson down? It was pretty yep. impressive, man. Yeah. There were many times you could tell they were trying to get him matched up on Ballantyne, and Ballantyne was running that jaw too, boy. He was not backing down from Justin Jefferson, man. You love to see it. 
Um, let's see here. Mike Hebring says a cornerback is not good to go, not even close. Now, that doesn't mean you have to take one at 25. Completely agree, Mike. Got to gotta follow the board, right? Got to trust the board for sure. Um, right. David, oh, but ahead. we want a cornerback. Just here to tell you, Pag is back. <laughs> Lock him down, right? That's exactly right. I'm excited to see how he reacts to Jeff Halfley's defense, man. Um, David Mitchell says Packers need to bring in Wagner at inside linebacker. Are you preaching to the choir, man? I would love yes. to see them on a one-year deal, man. One-year deal and go out and draft a Peyton Wilson or someone like that or a Junior Colson or, or whoever and, uh, man, have them be your third linebacker. you got McDuffie with as depth. And uh, you, you're only going to get one or two, one maybe two years out of a Bobby Wagner, right? But the leadership, him right in the middle of that defense, you got McKinney backing him up. God, it just feels – it just feels right now. We'll see. You know how Goody Goody likes to keep a young team, right? He's probably going to be – this team's probably going to be even younger than it was last year, and they were the youngest team in the league. So um, I think it's safe to say Goody probably disagrees with us, David, but we're on board with it, man, no doubt. Uh, United Bates says secondary picks need to have the ability to step up and tackle. Amen, Bates. It's amazing how people look at a corner and go, well, yeah, I'm not really worried about his tackle grade. I am. I'm sick of watching these guys running – running butt naked through the trailer park after breaking three tackles on a, on a simple, you know, inside zone. It's like, mm -hmm. cause they, they bounce that thing outside and our corners look like, you know, more confused than a fart in a fan for factory. It's just like, what, like, it's okay to have corners that are physical, right? Jacob, we talk about that. We kind of take a glimpse at those when we're looking at these prospects, don't we? Jacob said, absolutely not. He was, I think he's on mute. He is on mute. He's over. I know what he's doing. He's in devil's lettuce tonight. Ain't he? <laughs> He may have had to step away. You're muted if you are talking, Jacob. It's all right, buddy. We, you're too cool for school. That's totally cool with us. So. I walked away for a second. What's up? <laughs> no, he's he's look. He you can hear him <laughs> chewing. He's eating dinner right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I love it. That's the kind of quality programming you get here on Packers Total Access. That's the way we roll. Got right? so. the Stouffer's in the microwave, and you didn't hear beep. You had to mute it real quick and. <laughs> Stouffer's. <laughs> He's got that lean cuisine over there. Why, Emilio? Because he works yeah. out. Oh, they're pizza rolls. <laughs> oh, the Totinos. I heard no, just kidding. I heard they were looking for a sponsor, right, Jacob? Totinos was. <laughs> I don't know if you heard us earlier today, uh, Emilio. We said you were probably eating an Alfredo burrito. Earlier. Yeah, I did. I did, did, I did hear that. that one. <laughs> <laughs> he said I did. You know, I could get behind that if if someone created something like that. I could too, actually. Jacob eating them good brown. I don't want to hear the word brownie for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done with the brownies. Golly, man. overdose on vegetable oil. I, I I I was sitting there in the bathroom floor thinking, this is this may be how I die. Vegetable oil. Yeah, he overdose. not only rambled, but he rumbled and stumbled. Oh, I, I stumbled to that bathroom. Let me tell you that, Tim. If you're the one who hit that. <laughs> um, so if we look at a, just a quick glimpse here, I'm not going to read them off again, but you can just kind of see. I love how PFF does this. They kind of color code everything, so you can see both the offense and the defense on the field at the same time. Where are the holes at, Jacob? On offense, what sticks out to you, buddy? Call them out. Give me three names. line, I'd go uh, right guard, center, and then uh, honestly a tight end might not be bad either. Right. Hey, add cool. a little depth, right? Add a little depth. Um, running back too. You know, I know we just paid Josh Jacobs, but like, you know, like Ryan and other people have pointed out, you know, you got all the guarantees up front. You could literally get out of that contract after year one. I'm praying to sweet baby Jesus he don't hold out after year one, but to try to get some more guaranteed money. But probably still going to take a running back in the draft. I don't think that changes. If the right, if if the best running back on the board sitting there in the third round, I'm totally cool with them taking Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, whoever Goody likes the most, right? So, yeah, to me on offense, the need would be as far as draft. If you were just going strictly off of need, I would say I would say guard, tackle, and center. If center falls just right, because Myers' contract's up next year, I wouldn't re-sign him. But the Packers do seem like they like him quite a bit. So on defense, Tim, this is your specialty here. What do you see as holes on defense, man? As far as we want to attack here, the rest of free agency and possibly the draft. Corner, middle linebacker. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, depth at safety for sure. But yeah, um, I do. I think we need we need to add some talent at in the middle and uh, and our corners. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Emilio, do you see it the same way, man? For me, it's you got to have – you need that box safety, right? Mm -hmm. You need an inside linebacker. You need a slot corner, and you need an outside corner. Is that how you're seeing it too? At least. 
And I mean, <laughs> that, that'll be at least four, right? And then probably take three or four old linemen. That's another four. Goody trades back one of his picks, and then he maybe picks up. Let's. I mean, I I wouldn't put it past him picking up a wide receiver, right? You know, we'll yeah. pick up we'll pick up a back a wide receiver just to keep the competition. You know, we think we got that great wide receiver core, and we do. But Goody's always going to test them, and that's and I, I think that uh, that's kind of how they're building the team. And Matt's just excited about all the talent that he has. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm excited to see this defense come together. And and like I said, Halfley seems to be the defensive back whisperer that everyone's talking about. So let's see if he can uh, he can go out there and do some whispering. Um, we're at the 48-minute mark. We can go one of two ways here, guys. I've got a chalk talk of three plays keyed up for Xavier McKinney. We can do that. Unless you guys have got topics you'd rather talk about, I'm totally cool with that too. So we can carry that over to tomorrow night. Um, you want to go around the horn here once? Jacob, did you have anything you wanted to hit on? I didn't get a chance to check our DMs. Do I need to pull anything on screen for you? I may have sent you something, but it's probably not that important. I might have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, uh what are you thinking here, man? I don't know. Eldergrim says he's not sure if we need a fifth tight end, but we need a fourth because I don't think we're gonna keep Deguara. So that's all I was saying. Yeah, DeGuara's <laughs> gone. You bring you bring him back Tyler Davis. You've got Ben Sims. So if you draft one, he's he's pretty much taking Ben Sims' spot, right? Ben Sims. I forgot about Ben Sims. I like Ben Sims too, man. I thought he'd be too. Totally don't get, why do we need Tyler Davis? I just don't get that. Yeah. John Schmidt in the chat says depth at edge could be a need to completely agree. We actually have it listed as we need to draft one simply because um, you know, Enig Barre is going to be on the injured reserve most of the year with that ACL late in the year. You're going to need a backup edge. I feel like I've said that 5,000 times this offseason because I probably have, but we got to keep remembering that. And why? Because same reason we talk about tackle, right, Tim? It's a position. You know how Goody feels about his edge and his tackle spots. So Yeah, and, and drafting one when you don't need one is the best time to do it. It doesn't – that formula works across the board, not just with quarterback. Yeah. Definitely. Emilio, you got anything you want to hit on, Bob? Uh, no, the chalk talk is where I'm heading. All right, let's do it real quick. We got to go rapid fire. All right? We're not going to go way over here. You guys got to help me stay. Um, let me know the time as we go along here, as if I don't have a clock in the lower right. I'm too lazy to look at, right? So <laughs> here we go. Um, what I went to was one of his highest graded games of the year. This was the Giants against the Eagles the last week of the season, okay? I'm going to show you what the defensive assignment is to kind of give you an idea of the range that Xavier McKinney kind of shows here, okay? But we're not going to get too lost in what the Giants are doing defensively, but we will call it out. They're in a nickel 2-4-5 here. They're going double mug. Double mug simply means they've got the two linebackers, the inside linebackers, mugging the A-gaps, okay? What they're trying to do is get these guys all confused up here, these five, on which are blitzing. They're actually showing here – on this blitz look, they being the Giants, they're showing one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only five in to block, right? You've got a chipper potentially and a chipper right here, okay? So they're trying to sift this thing out. They're trying to decide what's going on. They go nickel, two, four, five, double mug, fire zone, cat five, cover three, okay? What that means is with the fire zone, and this is going to piss some Joe Barry haters off, so brace yourself, okay? Cat five is real simple. Okay. Well, first of all, let's talk about cover three. Let's let's reverse engineer here. Cover three, deep third, deep third. Do you see they got two on the shelf? The strong or the the weak side safety in this case, right? Opposite the tight end is off screen. He's going to rotate down and play rat. Okay. So McKinney is going to cover deep third. This is deep third here. Okay. So nickel two, four, five, fire zone. What is the fire zone? This guy is KV on Thibodeau. Remember the guy they took in the top? I think that he was a top five pick. Jake will be able to confirm that in the chat if that was the case or not. He was an edge defender, right? You're going to see him pretend like he's blitzing and drop back in the zone. Now, I guess Joe Barry is the only one uh -oh. who has edge defenders drop into coverage. I got you. But here it is again. The cat five is real simple, guys. It's the cat blitz. It's a corner blitz. This nickel corner is going to blitz. OK, so these guys are all showing blitz, but what's essentially going to happen is fire zone blitz. Right. This guy's going to drop out and bail out. So you've got three zones underneath. You can see the safety rotating down the the uh, the edge defender dropping in on the fire zone and then the inside linebacker dropping everyone else. I'm pretty sure is blitz and there might be a loop blitz in here, too. But these guys are firing. So it's a cover three. What we refer to as a three, three, three high, three rat 
Cat 5 Blitz. All right, so let's roll the tape, and I want you to key in on our boy Xavier McKinney and watch the freaking ground this dude covers. I about said a bad word, so I'm so excited about this signing. Here we go. We roll the tape. You see the corner starting to back off now. Oh, that's another thing I want to point out, too. Like, I just got to do it here. I don't know the down and distance. to see if it rolls it right here. What's that, eight, yards? Yeah, look, what is this guy doing playing so far off? What are we doing? <laughs> Joe Barry. It happened all <laughs> happened That's all 12. Across. All across there, yeah. Don't do not do it. Don't do it, Emilio. You're going to get some trouble. So, here we go. You see, look at KV on Thib Thibodeau. See him drop back. Look at that big boy dropping into coverage, right? Now, roll it back. Side adjustment. Watch right here. Watch McKinney. You're going to see him bail. He's bailing deep third, and watch him break on this ball. When the ball is snapped, this quarterback thinks, single coverage, we're good here, man. Safety bailed out. This is the stuff that McKinney – I'm going to ask you guys, how many times have you seen Darnell Savage, Jonathan Owens, or Rudy Ford do this from the middle of the field to the sideline? Watch this cat right here, man. He thinks, all right, this is single coverage, third and eight. Let's just take a shot here. You're in the middle late, by the way, too. Who is this guy flying over the field? Huh? it out. Look at the toe tap, boys. Yeah. You're going to see multiple angles here. We'll talk through it. You guys, you got the floor. What do you think about that play? You'll see it. It'll, like I said, it'll come in right here. That's uh, Darrell uh, Revis all day right there. Look at that, dude. Look at this. That's Nick Collins' top stuff right there, boys. Yeah. Ooh, you can't teach it. instincts, right? And, you can't. And you can't. Yeah. Just what do you think, Jacob? I mean, this is what we're talking about, a, a, a guy that here's a guy that can cover some ground, right? Yeah, it's hard to believe that people – didn't he, they say they ran a 4-6? Bro, that's what I'm saying. You He's watch him on tape. And it, there's a thing called football speed. That 40 yep. yard dash is so overrated, man. So overrated. They should make them run the 40s at the combine with pads on. So they really, get an accurate I, number. I really think they should. I really think they should. But again, just the awareness, the situational awareness on the sideline, too. That and imagine him just playing on turf, on not turf next, you know, on some nice, some nice grass, a little bit of artificial in there. Yeah, a little, little weave over there. Uh -huh. Lambo. Right here, they just basically reversed it. They ruled it incomplete, had inconclusive evidence. Look at my man. I love I love his energy, too, man. Love his energy he brings. All right, here we go. Next play. You look at the clock. This is this is not an error, okay? He just got the interception within 30 seconds. Well, hold on, let me get to the next. There we go. Look, um, like 30 seconds later, okay? So the New York Giants get the ball back. They go three and out, punt it back. They only – you only use up basically 30 seconds, and they were just passing the ball like a bunch of morons rather than trying to get to halftime with this lead, okay? But looky here. One minute left in the second quarter. You're still in the middle. You just got a turnover in the middle eight with that interception, right? First and 10 play, okay? Here is the play call as we roll it forward here. We're just going to go nickel two, four, five, cover one man. This is going to be real simple. Now, people ask, what can he do? Can he just Does he just play deep post safety? He can play man too, right? Right here, you've got cover one man. A safety is off screen, so you've got a safety off screen playing playing that deep center zone, right? Right here is our board boy, boy uh, um, Xavier McKinney. Man coverage on a tight end that's flexed out, so they got Y flex. So this is all man across the board, right? Man, I don't know what he's doing playing that far off again, but <laughs> man, right? And you, you're basically going to bring – I think you bring a four-man rusher. It might be a five. Yeah, it's just a four-man rush, and someone will be playing hole. You'll notice it's man because this when this guy flexes out, this backer streaks – to cover that guy as they use motion. But, again, I want you to key in on our boy, Xavier McKinney. They're going to try to run a little smoke route here. Why do they run a smoke route? Look at the hat count, right? You've sim It's real simply you got a two versus two with one of them. Look at the separation here. you got – what is that, Emilio? Roughly eight yards, roughly seven, eight yards separation. So you like right here. Yep. You like a little smoke. Throw the smoke route, right, right here. Let this guy block and then mm -hmm. throw a move on this guy. Yep. Watch Xavier McKinney right here, boys. I'm going to do a little smiley face, a little angry smiley face, because this is what we've been waiting on. You got a little nose, got a stogie here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Coming off the stogie. Watch this right here. Look at Xavier McKinney. As soon as the ball snapped, watch him read and react. He even baits him a little bit, too. There's the motion. See the man at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's cover one. Look at this. No hesitation. Read it out. All. Bang. I there cannot was, wait to see that Atlanta. There was no hesitation. You know what else I love? Look at their record. Five and 11. Mm -hmm. Second quarter. One minute left. He just had an interception. And he doesn't care, right? He's still playing. He's still balling out. That's yep. what we need. We need guys that are not going to take a playoff. 
period. You got to every, every single down, you got to show up. Yeah. And again, that break, man, think in his mind, okay, this is cover one man. As soon as he sees the tight end peak, all right, right. this is smoke. It's right here. He could have yeah. just jumped it, but it's almost like he's baiting him. Like It oh, was boy. one Mississippi, and he made the decision he was breaking. Yep. Bang. I love it, dude. Just a phenomenal play. Um, I, You know, Jeff Halfley, again, we talked about he's probably watching tape of free agents and going to Goody going, I like this guy, this guy, and this guy. This had to be at the top of his list. Mm -hmm. man. Had to be. And you can just tell his teammates absolutely love it, man. Saquon Barkley and him were tweeting back and forth after they both left the New York Giants. I think they were both happy to get the heck out of town, to be honest with you. But uh, what do you think about that, Jacob, as far as him jumping that? So there you we, we showed him playing deep center field in the cover three, which you'll see plenty of that. And now we've seen him play man coverage. Look at him break right here, Jacob. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, like you said, that's game speed. I don't care what the 40 is with the RAS. And as far as his leadership skills, I don't know mm -hmm. if this is 100% true, but I'm fairly sure – that him and Jacobs were both their team captains. So absolutely, that is one hundred percent true. He, he's definitely got the captain patch on, um, in all these clips. So I hope yeah, we, I hope we do that in Green Bay this year. Me I too. We, I and if it hurts somebody's feelings, camp. yeah. If it hurts somebody's feelings, Tim, tell them to get over it, dude. That's yeah. right. We, you need a captain room. You need one. Every football team has a captain room for a reason mm -hmm. because yeah, someone the gets their feelings hurt. Gosh. Yeah, the rotation didn't work for me. Can you yeah. go back to that? Bring it back a little bit just yeah. before the snap on that other angle. Let's see here. Which one are you talking about right here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So watch, uh, watch your tight end here. See him turn. Yep. He, he already see. So you talk about instinct. That's, that's McKinney just reading this guy's head. Cause he, oh, yeah. he like this guy just basically snitched himself out without realizing it. Mm -hmm. um, and he, do, he doesn't go a hundred mile an hour either. Like watch yep. how he's, it's almost like he baits him a little bit too, Tim. Watch this, man. Yeah. Yep. He's sitting on maybe the possibility of a wheel route. Right. Right. And now right here, look at, he's just going to, now he gets his eyes on the quarterback. Yep. Right, let's, yeah. just, yeah, let's go ahead and cheer. But it's like, he, he's looking at him like, well, you're not even going to engage with me. Your head's turned. Look, you're looking here the whole time. Yep. So why do I have to worry about you? I it's mean, a that's just great football. It's a great point too, because the receiver, the Z in this scenario, right? This Z receiver here, he doesn't tip the smoke. He does a good job at the route. See how he starts forward? Yep. Yeah. And it's like McKinney didn't care. He knew what was going on. Exactly. All right. Yeah, beautiful play, man. So, again, two interceptions within 30 seconds, both in the middle eight. That's how you win ball games, right there, man. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm really excited. Again, so here you see him playing man coverage. He can kind of play a little bit of that quote unquote slot, even though it was over the tight end. He can get down in there, play in the box if you need him to. He can also play that deep, deep center field, that post safety, right? Free safety, whatever you want to call it. Basically, the guy who's responsible, he's your most rangy defensive back on the field, right? I love this right here. Look who gives him a high five. Look at Wink. Wink knows that dude right there. Yeah. yeah. Players going to be coaches. Week five. Look at that. I'm telling you, McKinney's going to fit in perfectly with Jair and Keyshawn and, and the guys <laughs> back there. I mean, this secondary is getting stronger. I completely agree, man. So here is uh, the final play we'll show. Third quarter. They're still in the middle eight, gang. Still in the middle eight, right? When we talk about middle eight, we're talking about um, the last four minutes of the first half, the first four minutes of the second half. Typically, the team that wins the middle eight, if you get a team that wins the middle eight and wins the turnover differential, it's like a 93, 94% probability they win the game. That's It's important to grab that momentum going into halftime and keep that momentum starting the second half, right? Um, so here you are, third quarter, middle eight. I believe this is obviously the opening drive. It's a third and eight play. Nickel two, four, five. I think this is cover two man. And I'm going to explain to you why it's 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 hard to read. Here's McKinney, okay? Notice this safety. They're kind of showing a cover one look, right? And it does end up being man coverage. But I want you to really key in on McKinney here, okay? Watch what he does here. And I, I honestly think Wink gave him the freedom. Hey, man, you sugar all you want. You do what you want, right? Right here, it's almost like he's he's faking a blitz. Does this not look like cover one man to you guys? Yep, definitely. Right. So this is cover one man. They're playing a little press. Again, I don't know how Joe Barry snuck in the building here, but <laughs> there he is once again. Um, <laughs> so watch this right here. Watch McKinney. Watch McKinney up top. Watch him bail. Now right here I'm going, okay, is he playing hole? He might be playing hole. But if he's playing hole, what's this guy do? This guy kind of looks like hole. So 
I'm thinking McKinney has a little more freedom than others. This may be a cover two man, which basically means, guys, cover two man is real simple. Um, let me back it up just a touch. If they're playing cover two man, McKinney is going to cover deep half. Mm -hmm. This guy is going to roll over, cover deep half. They're sugar and middle field close. They're actually going to go middle field open. It's going to be man. Man coverage, right? A little man coverage there, I'm sure. Man Man down here, right? That's that's the play call. Watch McKinney once again, though. You think it's cover one man, and he might be, you know, kind of sugaring the blitz and then fading out into the hole. Watch him. He turns this into a cover two man if it wasn't. <laughs> Watch him break on this damn ball, dude. Knock it away. Like that. That's what you're talking about, Jacob. Forget mm -hmm. the RAS. Look at this, dude. And again, only six foot tall. Look. Yeah, it's just. I'm excited. Dude. I think just some people can do it. I mean, because looked at wasn't a Kyle Hamilton almost the exact same spot ran like a four ran six. A really, really, really wonky forty yard dash. You know, yeah. just a stud. What I love is look, look. He has confidence, right? He's he is three yards off the line of scrimmage when it starts. Not even one yard off the line of scrimmage when it starts, yeah. and he has the ability and knows that I can back pedal and get myself clear. I know I got a tight end and a wide receiver. All I got to do is keep my peripheral open. The tight end goes on across. Look at, I already got one dude on my side. Look at how he's kind of just gallops too, and then turns his hips once he knows where the ball's going. It's like he's almost just playing. Like it's it's crazy. You guys right. act like you've seen an alien here because we're not used to this at the safety position. This is what I'm talking about. Like, like but, you watch the tape and you don't find yourself going, "Oh man, or, I, I never found myself going. This scheme's bad." I found myself going, "What the heck?" Like it's supposed to be a first round pick and savage, right? And this, this is what we're not used to seeing. This feels like Nick Collins. Nick Collins played smooth like this, Jake. Like you talk about, just natural, just a couple couple gallops, bang. Look at the change of direction. And what have we had every time we won a Super Bowl, Clayton? I'm telling you, bro. Ooh. 1966 and 67, Lombardi had Willie Wood. 1996, Mike Holmgren had Leroy Butler. Now, Leroy Butler would play in the box. He would blitz. He'd do much like what you see with McKinney here, moving around quite a bit, right? These two snaps here, you've seen him run up, line up on the strong side, although the first one they rotated out and he ended up playing deep third. You know how many quarterbacks come to the line on that first play, and they see this safety up here, and they think, you know, he was actually over here. They're probably thinking, okay, he's going to be the he's going to be the robber. And then he bails all the way out and covers deep third and gets to the sideline and makes a toe-tap interception. Like, I guarantee you that quarterback didn't think that was the play call. He was originally looking at this dude thinking that's your deep safety. That's going to be your middle, your center field, right? I'm talking about on the first play specifically. But, yeah, I love what Jacob pointed out there, just his natural ability to move, man. Look how he's covering ground, comfortable, comfortable. Oh, yeah, you're going to try to take that shot? Not on my watch. Great ball skills too, man. Great right, ball skills. Two there. shuffles, open his hips, and, and makes the decision to go. Yep. So – um, again, we could have plucked many, many plays out of many, many games. I've seen this one because I was like, man, that happened in the middle eight. Like, he single-handedly closed that game out going into halftime for those guys, mm -hmm. you know? And I love that he can get his head around and track the ball like that, right? Yep. It it's doesn't rare. matter where he was. He was he was on the line of scrimmage. He opened up. He backpedaled. He shuffled. He, he swung his hips, and he was still able to get his head around and track yep. that. Absolutely. I hope he works with uh, Stokes. <laughs> That's <laughs> what <laughs> It's exactly what I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Be exactly. a good teammate and, and, and coach your, your teammate up a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. If you think for a second that this isn't going to trickle throughout the building, especially the defensive room, man, I'm telling you, it's going to make a big difference. I really believe. Yep. Uh, spinning Wheezy with the Super Chat. Thank you so much, bud. How much I got to donate to watch Cedric Gray film? <laughs> <laughs> And Jake Chavink, we are you busy tonight? Oh. <laughs> That's the guy you want to see break down some Cedric Gray film right there, man. Uh, for sure. Um, Cedric, well, we appreciate your two dollars, though. Thank you. No, absolutely. <laughs> I get a refund here. Uh, I, here's here's my rule of thumb when it comes to the prospect. Jake is a Packer fan, obviously, but he is a big NFL draft analyst. I consider he might not be going to shut up, Clayton. You're embarrassing me. He is a draft analyst. Yes. I'm not. I'm not that guy. I don't get into diving into all the prospects, watching the tape, grading them myself. All that. There's nothing wrong with it. I just it's just something I'm not into. What you'll see me do is the second the Packers make their picks, just like with this McKinney signing, I'll jump in and do chalk talk on them from college. That's when you'll see me do that stuff. So mm -hmm. I just don't want to – I don't want to say this like it is wasting time because if people enjoy it, and God knows there's plenty of people like you, Spin and Weezy, that love watching it, um, I don't want to waste time 
on players that aren't going to play for the Packers when I can kind of be digging into what they did last year schematically, that type of thing, and trying to understand, learn a little bit more about what they're currently doing. Jake Shavink is your guy, though, man, no doubt. But thank you so so much for the Super Chat, but we appreciate it. We got Mark with the Super Chat as well. Mark Zambito says, great show. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Mark, man. We appreciate you, pal. That means a lot to us. Um, it can get negative out here, and when we get those positive comments, man, it does mean a lot for sure. Um, the, the problem with going live multiple times a day is Jacob will tell you, Tim will tell you too. You put yourself out there. It's you, you got to be a little bit vulnerable and people are going to disagree just to disagree. And you're going to run into some a-holes. You just got to <laughs> gotta pretend like they don't exist and move on. And unfortunately I'm not good at that because I'm Water off a duck's back. I was raised by an Irish biker who's quarter Cherokee. So there's, that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's just in the blood, but. Around the horn, anybody got anything else, man? Uh, hour eight. We got through that chalk talk pretty Can you bring up too old for this? Is his last comment? Yeah, let's see here. Oh, go ahead. Too old for this says McKinney based on how excited. Not that one. Uh, this one. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Too old for this. This is such a good point, man. Put this on the ticker. <laughs> RAS isn't everything. Michael Scott ran 15 mile an hour and wasn't drafted. That's true. <laughs> Run, Oscar, do it. <laughs> Pretty sure he ran like a 33 or something, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's humanly impossible. Beat it. I love how on the uh, Packer Net after dark, uh, how people have been trying to get Ryan to run the 40 and try to get this big competition going. I think it would be hilarious, man. Um, we should I, I really think it would be fun. Well, as long as we, we, if we do it, we got to just make sure we've got a – you know, an EMS unit on standby nearby, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does I've Mandy know CPR, Clayton? <laughs> no, Mandy don't know no CPR. <laughs> Mandy knows I, dial 911. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> I actually know CPR, believe it or not. Um, there I'm we go. Back in the RLTC. Kind of, kind of tough to do it on yourself, though, Clayton. <laughs> yeah, what are you saying, Tim? I'm going to be the one passed out over Well, there? you're going to have to run the 40 at some point. I'll time you, and then you can time me. Imagine, CPR. I'm going to be like Michael Scott. I'm going to show up in the Daisy Dukes, right? <laughs> and uh, the tight shirt. I'll have the the knee knees taped up like Andy, right? You got to have those taped up. Oh, so you yeah. Tape. Yeah. And I'll slip off around the corner and eat a pan of brownies. You got to carve up. You know what I'm saying? Like Michael Scott <laughs> says. So, yeah. In my knee. Um, you know. That's I'm how more, Wayne's getting out of our, t- our time 40. <laughs> I'm more worried about the back, to be honest with you. I've got two ruptured discs that I've finally got maneuvered to where I can live a normal life. And I know getting out there trying to push this old body to the limit, I would not be surprised yeah. if uh, – yeah. Do you got a 40-yard straightaway, Clayton? What's that? Oh, in the yard? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. We got – right over here on the other side of the creek? Come on, yeah. dude. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. We can maybe – we can watch it. Though. There's, a, there's a big crane-like bird that lives in the creek. I see him from time to time. I hear Lincoln barking. I go out there, and he's looking at me like, look at this alien. What is this thing? Thing's like four feet tall. Uh-huh. Gotta, yeah. Yeah, we can do that, man. Too old for this, says he's speaking your language here, Emilio. Fettuccine Alfredo, I'm telling you, it's the secret to first round talent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, EJ Raji mastered that for sure, didn't he? Oh, yeah. So, uh, all right. Anything else, Jacob? You got anything, Bob? No, I'm this was fun, man. Uh, Tim, you good, Bob? Uh, yeah, just I'm, I'm with Wheezy there in the comment. Uh, Cedric Gray, certainly someone that should be on the radar, um, yeah. for depth, you know, at linebacker. Uh, yeah. looks like he fits the mold, so yeah. uh, co signing I- that one for sure. I think I talked about him last time. Let me just double check again. Linebackers on my board. I got to adjust it. It's going to change a little bit. Junior Colson. I want to make sure this isn't covering anyone up yet. Junior Colson is my top linebacker right now in the 49 spot. And then uh, if you slide on down, second is Peyton Wilson in the 63 spot. And then I got Cedric Gray at 66. So Cedric Gray will be in the same tier as Peyton Wilson most likely. Yeah, definitely will be. So, yeah, that's how I've got them lined up. So, yeah, I got Cedric Gray as my – uh, I guess that would be my third best linebacker. So I'd be totally good with that. Notice Edrin Cooper. I got him quite a bit. I've got him underneath Jeremiah Trotter Jr., man. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, Edrin Cooper, the thing that bothers me is in 2022, he didn't have a great year. You got one good, uh, one fantastic year. Don't get me wrong. This year, coming out of his, la- his senior year or whatever it was, junior year, last year in college was phenomenal. But the year before, if you go watch the tape, nothing special. So it kind of, I get worried about those prospects. I'm not saying he's not worth a first round pick or even a second round pick. I'm just saying, I look at those players and go, who's done it more often, right? Like Cam Kinchin's 2022 tape, phenomenal. Last year, absolute cheeks. That worries me. 
That's why I'm big on Tyler Newbin, because if you look at Tyler Newbin on the list here, if I can find him, he's a little bit. Yeah. So I've got him in the 28th spot. Um, you know, last year, 120th ranked in PF, um, 2022, 120th ranked in PFF, 10th this last year. That's not as bad as, like, like I said, with Cam and Kinchins, you know, grading out absolutely horrible. So the big one here, Jake or Jacob, Jackson Powers Johnson, man, I know you, uh, you like Zach Frazier. I got him in the 34th spot. Um, and his his stuff pretty good too. Seventh in 2022, 21st in 2023. That's pretty solid. Jackson Powers Johnson, fourth best center in 2022, first in 2023. Yeah. Just an absolute stub. And I can't wait to see him test. Mm-hmm. Um, Zach Frazier still hadn't tested yet either, had he? I don't think so. All right. I, hey, he's from West Virginia, man. I'd like to get him in there just so we could play country roads at Lambeau. You know what I'm saying, Amelia? Let it blast, please. It blast. <laughs> All right. We're wow. out of here, guys. Oh. What's that? All, all I was going to say was back up what David said. Hit that like button before leaving. Anyone on Twitter, if you want to comment, hey. exactly. Hit, yeah, if you could just angle that thing right over to the like button. It's right over here. And uh, uh, anyone on Twitter that wants to comment, or oh, Lord. Premium, go ahead and just send that that way. And I think we're good to go. Jacob is ready to hit the restroom. He's ready, <laughs> he's ready to hit the gym. That's what he's ready to do. You got to yeah. start wearing a diaper, Jacob. Yeah, Jacob's ready. All right. Ooh, Bates, what are you doing? Come on, Bates man. over here. Bates just remortgaged the the house. Oh, hey, wow. Hey. Yeah, wow. Big, big, big super uh, super chat here donation. You got a Bates. Hey, got for that game. man, we just finished the drink, right? <laughs> wow. United Bates says you guys are killing it. Appreciate the hard work. Glad to be a part of the journey. Go back, go Bates. You're you're the man, dude. Yeah. You donated autograph cards that we gave away to listeners. You just we're uh, lucky. We're lucky to have to have you know fans and supporters like Bates, man. I'm That's- totally expecting to get some kind of document in the mail. With United Bates claiming me on his taxes because <laughs> it's so much to the chat, man. We appreciate you, Bates. Thank you so much. Give a special shout out to Spin and Wheezy as well for the super chat. Mark for the super chat. Like I said, Bates. Thank you so much, buddy. You didn't have to do that, but we appreciate it. You and Joyce are just phenomenal people, and it's yeah. uh, it's fun to get to know you guys and gals and talk a little Packer football. We're going to be here all off season. The draft going to be here in the blink, boys. Going to be mm-hmm. in the blink. Bill, the Packer fan, says you guys have good content, great show. If that's you in the profile pic, Bill, you are one cool looking man. Let me tell you, that's the truth. I hope I hope I look like that when I grow up. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> But, Whenever uh, that hey, happens, right? Yeah, so, ain't ever gonna ha- ask Mandy. Mandy's listening downstairs. Going, ain't, ain't, ain't. <laughs> See, <laughs> all right. Thank y'all so much. We appreciate you. No good morning, Lambo in the morning. Okay, um, I'm back on the grind. If everything goes as planned, we'll have a good morning, Lambo Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then next week we'll go to one show in the evening. Uh, unless, of course, these guys want to go live, and I keep putting pressure on them indirectly. So you guys are free to do that if you want. Um, keep that in mind. So that being said, we're out of here. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go, Pat, go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. Get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. <laughs>